Hello and welcome to another episode of Tutorial Thursdays. Today is our 10th edition, but it's also going to be a short one because if you don't know by now, most of our time and especially brain capacity is currently going into Trend Lab, our uh, second annual edition happening next week, Tuesday, September 15th, and the two consecutive Tuesdays after that. If you want to learn more, there's going to be the banner right here, and there's going to be a link in the description to our landing page where you can learn all about our agenda, speakers, topics, etc. Now, the topic of today is going to be importing context data into TrendMiner. Now, you might ask, why is that important? Well, we live in a world of living connections, where we connect different data sources, databases, systems, on-premise, in the cloud, hybrid, um, and the urge might be there to connect things, but it's actually important how you want to connect it, because you have your time series data, tags, maybe it's structured in asset framework, you have structured and unstructured context data, and it's really important to get that right, to get the data model right, before you actually set up those connections. Otherwise, you're at risk of losing huge on your investments because in the end, the systems are connected, but the data doesn't really work for you. So today, we're going to show you how you can import context data into TrendMiner with the idea that before you make living live connections, you actually take a step back and make sure your data model is correct and that you are sure that there's value to be had from this connection. So you can kind of experiment, you can try, uh, there's no big loss, there's no big uh, issues when you get an error. Uh, you can learn from them, iterate and so on. Um, and my tip is here to always try to break it down to the lowest level, start small and then step by step, you can build on those early successes. But at least you're sure that what you've done so far is gonna actually get you the value you're looking for in the end. So that being said, let's dive in and import some context data into TrendMiner. All right, to showcase a successful import, we're gonna keep working on the data set we generated in the previous tutorial Thursday. So I put up my emission tag again, and I wanna show you a couple of quick tips and tricks to get started easily with importing your data set. So first thing I would recommend is that you create a dummy tag for all of your import data, as long as you don't have that live connection. So in this case, for example, I could easily create a formula, just a tag, uh, it's gonna be one, it's just gonna be a constant value. I'm gonna call this tutorial Thursday, so TT import placeholder, for example. So you can name this whatever. You can add a description as well, so FM for my initials. Uh, this is a placeholder tag for emission context data imported through CSV. So I can add a description so that my colleagues know what that tag is. All right, so once I have that tag, I will go into Context Hub and I will go back first to the home page. And I'm gonna rewind and I'm gonna show you uh, all of those events that we uh, added last time. You see there's a, a good list, a good table of event data um, that I can export if I want to start from here, or I can just use it as an example of what type of data is contained in Context Hub. So I'm gonna export this as I can choose an Excel file, uh, or in this case, I'm gonna use a CSV, comma separated values file, and generate that. Now you'll see one of the new features is the not notification center in TrendMiner. So once I generate the export, if you're working with a lot of data, it might take a couple minutes, but I'm gonna get a notification whenever it's finished. So I can open that notification, and indeed this export is ready, so I can open it up and I will have that file right there. So I'm gonna open it up now. And I'm gonna get a file like this where I have a number of columns and each row corresponds to one particular context item. You notice there's a couple of things that are generated by TrendMire, such as the key of the context item that is unique, uh, who it was created by, in this case it was myself in the previous tutorial Thursday, and a bunch of metadata such as the event start date, end date, um, whether there were any approvals uh, generated on that, and what the emission type was. So, as you can see, it's a flat file with all of those um, parameters, all of those attributes in a flat list of data. When I import data, it's gonna look very similar. And if I go to the context import uh, module, which is under config, I will have context item import. Now, if you're not an admin, you might not see all of these options, but you should see the context item import. Um, where you will be able to import your context information. Again, there's a example provided, I can download it. And again, if I open it in uh, Excel, 
it is going to be a very similar type of file, but now it's going to be reduced to really the bare bones because it's not going to contain any of that trend manager generated information, such as who imported it or what the short key or the unique key is. In this case, we're really limited to just the information that I want to import. And the rest of the file is very, very similar. So what you could try for yourself is wrangle that exported file into the import format so I can use it again. Uh, in this case, I've already done that. So I'm going to open up my file and it's going to look like this. So I, all I did was I re rearranged some of those columns. I added a description, Tutorial Thursday Test, so that it's clear I, I can delete them later. Um, the type will be emission. Now important, this is the key that I gave my event emission or the emission type event. Uh, if I'm not sure what that technical identifier was, I can look it up here. So if I click on that uh, link, as you can see, you will need the technical identifiers. I can get the list here. And if I search for emission type, it's going to show me that the technical identifier for that emission event is indeed emission all uppercase. So I'm going to need that in my import. Now, if I go back to my emission um, import, that is what you saw there. That type is indeed uppercase emission. I'm not going to use keywords for this example. It's just a short example. And I'm going to use the start and end states with their respective timestamps to import into Trendminer. Once I'm ready, once my Excel file is ready, I come in here, I select the component. And in this case, I'm looking for that tutorial Thursday import placeholder that I created. So that's where I'm going to attach all of my context items to. And I'm going to drag and drop the file that I have ready to import. So you see it's now the context item import and I'm going to hit import. After a couple seconds, you'll see that the import has been indeed successfully completed. And I can very easily check this by refreshing the page. And you, you should now see the context items also appear on my import placeholder, which indeed you can. If I open up those context items, you'll see that this was imported as TT test. So that was the data that I just imported. Now from here I can build, so I already have the basic structures correct. I can now build on this to also include additional information such as the emission type, some numerical information about you know, the total emissions, etc. Um, and that way I can iterate over my data model and be sure that what I have is indeed valuable. For example, on the, on the context of view that we created last week, we were able to break this down by 24 hours and 30 minutes. Having that type available for breakdown was indeed valuable for us so we could see where the short and long emissions were. We can then later on base our analytics off of that. For example, I want to investigate only the 24 hour or only the 30 minute events. And having that keyword, having that um, attribute was very important to enable that workflow. So as you import data and you think about what workflows I'm actually going to be using this in, I will be able to further fine tune my uh, structure. Once I'm happy with the structure on this one line or this one asset, I can build from there and extend. So once again, I would recommend starting small so you have your data model correct and ready as you scale up so you don't have any nasty surprises in the future. All right, there we have it. Just a quick example of importing context data into Trendminer to allow you to combine context with time series data for further advanced analytics. I'm going to recommend again to start small and work with this offline connection, which is just the import where you extract data from other platforms, such as you know, your SAP, your maintenance modules, your work orders, lab information, ERP information, raw material. I mean, the list goes on and iterate over that data model. So you're sure that what you're importing will actually bring you value. It's going to reduce the time to value for yourself. It's going to reduce the time to value for an organization because there's going to be less iterations once you actually set up that connection. And it's going to save you a lot of headaches because you imported data and you have to redo connections because the structure was just not right for you.